Hello everybody and thank you for coming back to the channel and to this whole new series about books. Why books? Well, because a lot of what I learned, I'm still old enough that I learned a lot from books before the internet. The internet is great and it has moving pictures and everything and people tell you things and you learn a lot. But uh, a lot of the base knowledge that I did get on aviation did come from books. And uh, I want to take you through a few of them that I have and I still keep. I choose this one first, this is the Rand McNally Encyclopedia of Military Aircraft, 1914 to the present. I think the present is probably around 1990 by the, by the inside and it's uh, by this right, I think it was a group of writers, but uh, this Enzo Angelucci is the one that put it together. So um, this one, I start with this one again because it's one of my favorites. I, I read it a lot, I spent a lot of time with it when I was, when I, when I was small and I, a lot of the base knowledge that I have as I say, comes from here. The structure of the book has some chapters. It's very, very well organized. It organizes in terms of the First World War, then goes in between war period, the Second World War and the post war and things like that. And then it also splits the, the airplanes and the, the models by countries and also by type. So the fighters, the trainers, the bombers, the transport. So it has taken evidently a lot of effort from the editor to put it together and uh, and it's very well structured. So let me show you some of the features that it has, which I did like. First one, I'll show you this one. It's just some pictures, some of the markings of, uh, of each of the countries. These are 1936 to 45. So we see there uh, a lot of the markings and the different markings from each country, which is good to, good to tell. And uh, even maybe more interesting, well, as interesting, I don't want to say more interesting, there are quite a few of these open up pages, which I remember enjoying a lot where it shows in scale the different airplanes. This one is a selected Second World War fighter. So these are the fighters. Again, there will also be, there'll be a page like this equivalent for, for the bombers, for the transports and, uh, and things like that. So this is a, a nice view of the, of the, of the models, basically. Or not the models, but the paintings and the profiles of the, of the airplanes themselves. Then, uh, let me see, I'll take you then to the next page that I selected to show you. This is also, inside is the, the same as for the fighters but the bombers, which is interesting. I don't know how much you can see of this, but it's interesting to see how big, for example, the Wellington, it's here, you can't really see it, it's outside, is uh, pretty much as long as the Lancaster. So very different, very similar sizes. But uh, on this case, what I wanted to show you is also these charts. I, I do like charts and, uh, and the numbers and comparisons and for example on this side we have the fighter production of the Second World War so if we go from the bottom we see here that the, the BF-109, the Messerschmitt, they made 35,000, the Yak-1 was 30,000, the Spitfire 20,000 and something, the Fokker Wolf also 20,000 and something so you can see also in, in, in comparison the production of the, of the different aircraft. On this side is the bomber production. So we see here that the most produced bomber was the B-24 with 18,000. Then the Junkers 88, which I'd forgotten about, it was made so much, it was 14,000. The Wellington, which is still more than the, the B-25 and the B-17 and also than the high ankle. So it's interesting also to, to see how each country and each model actually was produced. The color coding are the countries. So you can also tell what countries produced what. So. Again, more interesting data there. And uh, what I do like also, another thing that I like, I like pretty much the whole book, but uh, there are a lot of plates like these. This is the B-17, it's a B-17C without the, the tail turret, uh, which is, again, maybe not usual, I would say. Uh, they also have the Spitfire, I saw the, the DR-1, the triplane, they, they have more, they, they're more in the book. And what I did like to do, I remember, I would, I would read every single point at the here, this has the components up to 155 uh, points and then look for them, for them on, the, on the picture, right? So that was interesting to learn. I haven't done it in a long time, of course, but uh, I suppose that's also how one learns vocabulary specific to the aircraft engineering. So I did spend a lot of time also with these pages. I like this one, I like the Spitfire, I remember those were the, uh, my favorites, so that's good. Then another part which is also very nice and it has a lot of these illustrations basically like not just the, 
the, the, the three plan view that I'll show you also later but also the illustrations and with, uh, with the characteristics of the airplane. So again, I'll pick on the Wellington because one of it I like. We have also the, the Sterling, of course they, they will all be here. And here you have things like what the nation is, the manufacturer, then also the, the weights and the, the performance, the crew and things like that. So I, I do remember actually reading through all these specifications and sometimes comparing them. Of course I've forgotten most of it. Not that I need it, not that I use it, but I do remember, for example, checking out the crews. So, okay, the Wellington had a crew of six, the, the Sterling had a crew of seven to eight, the, the B-17, it was like ten and then nine, right? So, so a lot of information there also that uh, it was useful. Here we have also then the, here's the B-17 also, and it's organized typically also either by type or also by country. So here, for example, we have the Japanese bombers, uh, here we have the American bombers. Uh, then we have also the night fighters, it's also a section. And then let's see what else I marked here also to show you. Oh, yeah, these are the plates and some also some text. Again, I think I picked the Wellington, but uh, also the, the four engine bombers, this is an Italian one. So it's a little bit of text, the British bombers 38 to 40, a little bit of the history, a little bit of the models that were being uh, created and what they were used for, and also then the three view plate. This would be good if we wanted to create plans and I I do use these then, but out of the internet to do some of the small models that I'm trying to do, but um, but it's also good to see it. And uh, I think they're also within within scale, they have like two different scales, so they, they use it. So it's not just pictures, also some text, maybe that's what I wanted to say. Um, let's see what else I show you. Yes, here also more of the of the of the pictures, of the of the illustrations. Here we have reconnaissance aircraft, ah, yeah, here the, the Condor, the Focke Wolf Condor, which I remember I liked also, I had some models of that one also, more as the airliner than the bomber, but, but these are also good, and Japanese, so a little bit of, of everything there, and uh, let's see what else I follow, ah yes, and then another section that would come up would also be the ph photographs, right, so the actual photographs of the aircraft, um, we have here I think somewhere the Piaggio 108, which somehow was very attractive to me because it was kind of four-engine bomber, but not one of the famous ones. So this was the the Italian one, and uh, and basically these plates, like black and white plates of the of the aircraft that uh, that were available. Some of them are kind of well known, like B-17s and things like that, but others are maybe not so common, not so not so often seen. So it was also interesting to see that. At that point, somehow black and white did not disturb me. Now I do understand that, of course, with color, is, uh, it's, everything is much better. But, uh, but very interesting. So then it goes into the, the modern era, uh, post-war and things like that. So a lot of aircraft, not all of them, but, uh, but really a lot of aircraft. Here, what we have also, it's, and we have it also for the previous periods, is what year they were released. For the Second World War, it's interesting to see at what point then each aircraft would be released. Here it starts, these are the, the bombers from 45 onwards, so it starts with the Lincoln, and then we have things like the B-36 Convair, and then the B-52, of course. So, so a, lot of, uh, a lot of information. A lot of information that I've forgotten probably much more than I would like, but on the other hand, we don't really use this information for much, right? So, there it is. I would say one of my favorite, if not the favorite book that I have on aviation. I do have more, so uh, if you like, then I'll, I'll, I'll be using these opportunities when I don't have much time to, to do builds and to show what I'm doing on the, on the workbench to, to show you some of the books that come along. And uh, if anybody is around the area and wants to come and look at them and uh, maybe even borrow them, then for sure, you'll be my guest and we can spend the whole afternoon speaking about aviation and the meaning of life. In any case, thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you next time.